Hey guys, I wanted to let you know that I have actually started a Kickstarter for my book and new film. Um, I would love you guys to check it out. The book is called A Letter to My Father, What Your Son Wants to Tell You But Doesn't. The film is called The Letter. Um, these projects are definitely focused around the father-son relationship. And um, even if you're not a father or a son, um, I totally encourage you to check out the Kickstarter because I think this is a really important area that we as Christians need to be speaking into and saying and encouraging fathers and sons to have authentic um, relationships based around, you know, the faith in Jesus. So I think it's really important that we come around and step around even as sisters and mothers and, you know, sons and fathers that we come around this issue and we truly encourage fathers and sons to connect. So totally check out the Kickstarter. I'd love it if you could participate in this project that we're going on. It's so exciting. I'm so excited for it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, my name is Isaac and today I want to talk a little bit about what it means to follow Jesus as a disciple. And um, yeah, I'm going to dig into some text here and just kind of explore that a little bit more. After all, it is called Daily Disciple. So I thought, hey, why don't we talk about what it actually means to be a disciple and some of the facets of that. So let's jump into it. So to start us off today, I want to kick it off by reading a passage from Matthew 4, 18. And it says, while walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, that is Jesus, uh, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Now, if you've been in any kind of church culture, you know, you've gone to church, uh, or you maybe you're not familiar with it, this idea of being a fisher of men. What does that mean? What does that really um, encapsulate? Well, we think about it. These two disciples, Jesus approached them and he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. It's like, what the? These guys just got up from their job, got up, put their nets down, and they just followed him. And this idea of being a fisher of men, bringing others into the fold in following Jesus is very applicable for us today as disciples. A disciple is a follower, somebody that follows after something. We're all disciples of something in our lives. Before we were Christian, we were a disciple of the world. We followed the world, the culture, the movements, the fads, and everything that they embodied. Maybe we followed ourselves, our fleshly desires, what we wanted. We say, we got this. We can make it work. We followed ourselves. We were disciple, disciple of ourselves. But Jesus, he calls us to be disciples of him. And what does that mean? Well, it means following him, putting our trust in him, apologizing, repenting. You know, repentance actually means turning around. This idea of turning around from what you once were and then following something new. And the repentance, we're turning around where now we're following Jesus and putting our trust in Jesus. But he doesn't just call us to follow him and, you know, just do that for the, the rest of your life. Don't worry about anything else. Just follow me and that's it. But part of following Jesus is actually bringing others into it. This idea of evangelism and discipleship that we need to be not only aware of, but participating in. So how do we do that? Um, I'm 20, so this idea of being a discipler, of being kind of an evangelist, it's like, whoa, that's kind of a big title. I don't think I'm qualified or equipped, or like, how do, we, how do you do that? Well, I want to encourage you guys, because if, you know, if you're younger, it, it can be an intimidating thing. I'm not prepared for this. I don't have the education. I'm not equipped. So I want to help you out. You know, the gospel means good news. And when we're sharing the gospel, all we're really doing is sharing the good news of Jesus. And if you are following Jesus, then you know the good news. The fact that Jesus came to this earth to, to die on the cross, to first live a perfect life, then die on the cross, rise again from the dead, taking our punishment for our sins. See, the bad news was that we sinned and the good news is that Jesus came to forgive us of our sin and give us a right relationship with God. That is the good news. And that is the role of the of evangelizing, of evangelism, is preaching that and teaching that good news. This idea of discipleship, 
bringing someone alongside of you, saying, hey, I wanna help you follow Jesus more passionately, more authentically. I wanna help you. And in our lives, there's gonna be people in our lives that we can kind of help along the way. Maybe we're a little bit further than one of our friends and we can say, hey friend, come alongside me. You know, if you have any questions, I can help you. I might not know everything, but I can, I can I can try to help you follow Jesus more passionately and understand the truths of the gospel. See, you don't have to know everything to evangelize or participate in evangelism. You don't need to have all the answers in order to start discipling people, help in discipleship, participate in discipleship. You don't need to. And this is what I want to really emphasize is that we each have our own mission field. You may have heard that before, but I think we often miss out on actually what that means. We see missionaries going out into other countries and we say, wow, what amazing people there have that kind of faith to do that. They must be really, really smart and equipped to do all these things and preach the gospel and evangelize and disciple. That is really cool. I could never do that. But you know, we can read in the scripture that God has called us all into this, um, into participating, into this kind of discipleship. So you have areas, even now in your life, whether you're going to university, whether you're in high school, whether you're older and you have a job, you know, are there people there that you can come alongside and say, hey, if you have any questions, I'm here for you. You can speak truth into their lives, God's truth into their lives. Now that is participating in what God has called us to, becoming a fisher of men. But it doesn't happen, um, it doesn't happen just by wishing it would. We actually need to take action and we need to begin to be intentional about becoming this kind of discipler and evangelizing. Know that you feel inadequate. I understand those feelings. I feel those same feelings too. We all feel that fear, that inadequacy, but know that it's not about you. It's not about how well you can disciple people, how well you can evangelize. It's about you being faithful where you are. And if we can be faithful in what God has given us, in the talents and abilities that he's given us, in what he has equipped us in, to the level that he has, if we can be faithful with those gifts and resources, and continue to reach out to people. I think God's gonna to continue to use that in his kingdom. And that's my encouragement for you today. If you are unsure, if you're like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if I can do it. God will use what you have for his kingdom. Step out in faith and you know, it's gonna to be tough, um, but God's gonna use it and he's gonna help you along the way. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, encouraging, I encourage you to share it with a friend because I think a lot of people need to hear this message. Subscribe to the channel if you're interested in more videos like this. I'm putting out more all the time. Um, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next week. Bye.